you showed up. Yeah, I Yay. don't know why you would think I wouldn't. You know how it is with, like, press people and publicity people. Uh-huh. You know, I didn't know if I, nobody was getting back in touch with me. So. I'm a very responsible idiot these days. I hear, I hear. So how long have you been sober now? Over three years. That is incredible. Yeah. And uh, interestingly enough, my new husband and I, we decided to, we're not being sober, but we just decided not to drink since St. Patrick's Day. Oh, so. yeah, so you're just doing crack and heroin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only, actually. Actually, we decided uh, no crack, just heroin. <laughs> so I'm on the only heroin diet until right. uh, until our honeymoon in May. So you know, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling cool. you right now. And I also I saw that you're vegan as well yeah. too, which I have vegan friends, and that's freaking hard. It's uh, it's cool, man. I, I love it. I, I really? really do. Yeah. Because I love meat. Okay. I love meat in all forms, all kinds. You know, I did. Uh, so much drugs that, that I, I crossed this line into psychosis where I was um, hearing voices and hallucinating all this crazy stuff. And uh, I remember doing something like pretty messed up to the, something mean to a person and that I felt bad about. It. And this voice that I heard in my ear of this, this female voice said, you know, you're going to have to answer for that later. Oh my God. And I was like, whoa, oh. and I like, really creeped out. And then I, got, I remember just getting carried away with the idea that uh, I was going to have to answer for all, like, the suffering of the animals. And, like, I, got, I, I stopped eating meat before I got sober, actually. Holy cow. Yeah. That is so funny. Like, um, That's a scary story. I know. It was, like, uh, it's, it, it was all about, like, being afraid. And I'm kind of past that. I, I just feel like, uh, you know, I'm a... I'm a happier guy if, if, if uh, I'm a nicer guy. I feel like, yeah, you have, like, this warm light aura around you, which is a strange thing to say about Steve-O. It's, you know, yeah. it's a, to be honest, I'm not going to lie. When I first got the email, like, Steve-O's going to be in studio, I'm like, wait, didn't he die? I'm like, no, I just saw that, I just saw that documentary about you, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets really dark. Yeah, and like, really dark. I forget that at the end you don't die, yeah. but it feels like that. <laughs> That's funny. You... I, have a, I have an A&E biography coming out now. No. And I've got a book. I have, what? I have a book coming out on um, June 7th. It's called what? Professional Idiot, a memoir. Really? <laughs> right, yeah. And uh, you can pre-order it online. Well, online. you were a clown. Yep. I have so many questions about this because sure. I had to do an event, and I do it every year, with the Barnum & Bailey Circus. Ah, and I mean... Okay, I thought that's who you were with. I, I graduated from Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Billy Clown College. Uh, I never worked with the Ringling Circus, but I worked with another circus that had elephants and stuff. I'm just not into the. See, the, I and I circuses that, freak me out because of the the elephants and everything. But as far as the clown thing, when I was in clown college, they devoted one of their days to to having the the Ringling Company's PR people talk to us, and they they said like. They said, if, any, if you're working in the Ringling Circus and anybody asks you about animal abuse, you shut up. You have no opinion. You're a clown. You fall down. Oh, my you know? God. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, man, that it wouldn't have occurred to me to think that there was really something wrong, wrong you know, until yeah. then. And uh, that kind of opened my eyes to that. I was like, man, they're, 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 this is an issue. Yeah. And ever since then, I've just become much more... Uh, sort of charged about about it. And, Ever um, since I was little, I thought it was weird. I remember when they were pulling the elephants out, like I was dry, I was, you know, outside the street and I saw an elephant in the street and I thought, that's not it's where really he should sad. be. It's really sad, you know? sad, yeah. But my thing is, I remember just last year, I had a conversation with a guy in a clown outfit, right? And he's probably my age and I'm uh-huh. thinking, what the hell? Like, that's, that's just, cool. it's weird. Did you like, have sex with them? No. <laughs> did, did clowns get laid? Sure. Really? Had, you got laid a lot as a I, clown? I had sex with a clown, yeah. But yeah, you, you had but, sex like, with that's, a clown? That, that's the good news. You had sex with a clown, which is the good news. But the bad news is that she wasn't wearing her makeup. Oh. You know, like, that sucks. That's like having sex with an airline stewardess on the ground. Right. Is that the <laughs> same thing totally, at all? Totally pointless. Are girl clowns, are girl clowns, like, messed up in the head? Sure. Yeah. yeah. God, that's so yeah. strange. I can't, I it's just, it seems like you guys would be the weirdest people on the, I don't know. It would just, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, I concur. You concur? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so now you're, you're touring stand up. Here's the thing that I was trying to figure out because you haven't been known as a comedian. Sure. You were just a, you're a clown that did things to himself. Right. You puked a goldfish. You, rose to fame jackass and I was like I never saw a comedian on his resume I'm gonna call him out yeah no it's fine I started doing stand-up comedy almost five years ago oh okay and um and you know I was uh, a circus clown then then jackass started as soon as jackass started I was on tour 
And uh, so I've been doing uh, tours and live shows for as long as I've been in entertainment. And uh, it, was, it was almost five years ago, someone invited me to the Laugh Factory in Hollywood. Uh -huh. They were like, dude, come down and get on stage and do something crazy, man. And, uh, and I showed up and I looked around and thought, you know, the craziest thing I could possibly do would be to try stand-up comedy, you know? Yeah. And I remember, like, giving it a shot that night, just, just totally winging it. And I had some beginner's luck and I got some laughs. Oh, that's and, good. and I was like, man, wow, imagine doing stand-up comedy, like... Not, uh, I might not have to break bones and shove things up my butt for the rest of my life, you know? And, uh, and what I, a change! I know, what they, like, and I was really like fascinated by that. And uh, I stuck with it, and, and it turned into something. And then once, uh, once people started asking me to be a headliner in famous comedy clubs, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, well, you know, now they're selling tickets to a Steve-O show. And right. I just, I just don't have it in me to... Uh, to not do crazy stunts like people like like I'm known for, you know? right? So, exactly. So it's not just stand up comedy at all. It's really it's a variety show. You know? Oh, like, okay. I do a set of stand up comedy and then I do a set of stunts and tricks at the end. That's kind of cool because there's it's, really nobody doing that. Right. It's, uh, and really, it's kind of <laughs> old school. To be it, honest, it's, it's Steve Martin kind of did that kind of stuff. I don't not, know if Steve Martin. Not did that kind of stuff. not Steve O style, <laughs> right. but you know he definitely used props and did some. Yeah. Silly oh man, it's so much fun and like. You know, the, 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 the stand-up comedy part, it's, uh, you know, I have, like, I've had a ridiculous life, you know? Yeah. And, and, like, everything that I, that I talk about when I'm doing the stand-up is all true. And, I'll, like, I'll give you an example of, of something that, uh, you know, that, that really illustrates, like, um, how, uh, how it works, you know? Like, because um, I talk about jackass and stuff. And right. how, like, how the notoriety that jackass afforded me, like, changed my life. And this is something that people, like, legitimately want. Like, want to know, they're, they're yeah. Inter they're interested, you know? And they want to hear, like, like, like the behind-the-scenes sort of, sort of stuff about jackass. So, like, you know, the, when it came out, and, uh, and, you know, I'm on TV, like, I noticed chicks sort of treating me differently. You know, like, I noticed, like, girls really going the extra mile. You are getting, like, <laughs> clown chicks. You're getting right. real hot chicks, right. right? Oh, man, this one hot chick, okay, I, I, I really noticed chicks were going the extra mile when, uh, you know, we were filming our first movie, and I'm hooking up with this girl, and as soon as she got my wiener out, she felt like she needed to tell me something serious, right? She, she says, I was in a bad car accident. You know, and it was really, oh, yeah. it was really awkward. I'm thinking, like, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, <laughs> like, then she says, "Get ready to have a really good time," and she popped out her upper teeth. No! <laughs> yeah, she, she, I swear. And like, for, you know, and I, I, I have crippling issues with premature ejaculation. Right? Like, so like, it was only for a very brief moment after she popped out her upper teeth. But I'm telling you, I was blown away. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah. So oh, thinking, my God. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, here's this girl, and, and she's going, she goes, you know, to like with no teeth. And I'm thinking to myself, she's, she's not giving me a Hummer. This is a Gummer. Right? <laughs> this girl's giving me a Gummer. And I couldn't even wait to go running to tell my jackass buddies about this. And, like, and, and I wasted no time at all. They were so happy to hear about it that they literally found me a shark with no teeth to bite me in the first movie. And that is exactly... <laughs> that's where reason, that came from? That's the reason why there's a scene called the Whale Shark Gummer. And it's like, you know, here you have, like, you know, like, that's, that's completely true. And, and so is everything I, I, I talk about during my stand-up. You, you know? never know where the inspiration is going to come from right. for the and next the, jackass bit. And it could be from a gummer. Yeah, from it could a be chick. from a gummer. And right. now it's like, hey, your 80s and 90s you have all this stuff to look forward to with For the sure. old ladies, <laughs> right? Sure. Yeah, like the, the tour that I did when, uh, when, when, when Jackass came, came out, like I immediately got on tour and I wouldn't be surprised if I was in Dallas, honestly. Yeah, honest. right. <laughs> but, you know, I used to promote my old tour as, uh, as I will be drunk and on drugs or your money back, you know? And it was like, <laughs> and it was like a hugely successful tour, you know? Right. And I would like come out on stage with like a big bottle of tequila and I'd be chugging it and like, you know, I'd kick the odd guy in the nuts, you know? like, And it was like just sort of like a lot of drunken rambling. 
and like stupid stunts. And really now that uh, now I've been sober for a few years, you know, it's like what I've done with this tour is just I've I've replaced the drunken rambling with stand up comedy. Right. And I'm doing and I'm, so it's instead of drunken rambling drunken rambling and stunts, it's stand up comedy and stunts. Oh uh, yeah, that's and that's and, uh, great. And the circumstances that, that led me to get sober in the first place are hilarious too, I should add. You know, like I mean I've been uh, Clean and sober ever since the day Johnny Knoxville stepped in and pulled an intervention. That was and serious. And think about it, that's it's really it's serious and it's hilarious Ugh. at the same time. I mean, you know you've got a serious problem when Johnny Knoxville's your intervention. <laughs> if it's yeah. Johnny Knoxville, yeah, it's not like yeah. you know any Joe Schmo. Yeah. It's Johnny. When Johnny Knoxville tells you you have a problem, yeah. you should you, probably step back and go, maybe right. I do. You know, I mean, like. They, they have, uh, you know, they, like it's called 5150 in California, you know? Like if someone's deemed harmful to themselves right. or others, you, you know, you, you need to stop them from hurting themselves by locking them up in a psych ward. So Knoxville came over with the director of Jackass and the director of photography, executive producer, sound guy, camera guy. Like the whole crew of Jackass came over to my apartment to stop me from hurting myself after they helped me hurt myself for 10 years, right? Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, that's more than a little ironic. It's totally hilarious. I'm telling you, that documentary scared the yeah. crap out of me, and I thought you were dead. I yeah. seriously thought I mean, you been, were dead. I've been ruling celebrity death pools for, for a long time. Maybe like, I think I've cost a lot of people a lot of money on those things. <laughs> 